Hello everyone. Welcome to online services at North Park. The Lord be with you today as we gather for worship. My name is Jordan LG, the pastor of Worship Arts. As part of the series we are starting, our services are going to be coming to you. They're going to be hosted from each of our three locations. Today we are coming to you from our Fanshawe location in Northeast London. Pastor Shane Sims, our pastor of multi-site ministry, is going to be preaching. And one of our Fanshawe worship teams, led by Trish and Imran Hack, will be leading us in song. Would you please join us as we lift our voices and our hearts to the Lord?
It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all. The great giver of every breath that we breathe, and we want to just pour out our praise to you today. Well, the next song that we're going to sing together is one of those worship songs that's just filled with truths about who God is and what he has done for us. It's a song that reminds us of the joy and the freedom and the love that we have in Christ Jesus. It's a song that reminds us of the power of God's grace and forgiveness reminds us that even through the darkest times, we are not alone. We are not forsaken. As it says in Romans 8, verses 37 to 39, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord.
gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing all His mind, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Let us join our hearts and voices once again, lifting them to God as we offer our prayers. Let us pray. Sovereign God, King of creation,
You are the one who has spread out the expanse of the heavens and dug the depths of the lakes and seas. You are the one who has forested the earth and filled the land and sea with creatures. You called human beings forward to bear your image, caring for creation, caring for each other, thriving in the light of your love. We confess to you, holy God, that we have often spoiled these gifts, abusing creation, ignoring each other, turning our backs on your love. Because we did not make ourselves, cannot keep ourselves, and could never forgive ourselves, we turn to you, our creator, savior, and keeper. We bring you thanks for rest, for a break from work, for our church, our families, and our friends. We thank you for your word, that it may be opened and preached into our lives, and we thank you for your name on the lips of people that we respect. We thank you, O oh God, that we may wake refreshed from a night's sleep, alert to the possibilities of a new day, ready for your gifts to find and bless us. We bring you thanks, O oh God, for nourishing food and nourishing relationships, for the unbridled joy of toddlers and for the rich wisdom of the elderly among us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for work to do and energy to do it, for fine arts and fine artists in all their beauty and skill. Even on the gloomiest mornings of our lives, we have reason to thank you, to bless you, and to turn our faces toward the radiance of your love. O oh God, especially for your grace for your amazing grace, so old, so new, always reminding us of our dependence on you, always healing with your mercy. For your grace, we give you thanks, O oh God. Care for our restless world, we pray. In your mercy, cool our hot spots, restrain the lawless, and stimulate the imagination of peacemakers. Defend the weak, heal the sick, and send forth prophets and servants who preach good news to the poor. We pray, O oh God, for the church across the world. Revive the church, O oh God, and make us strong so that we may serve your purposes and bring glory to your name. Take into your care, Lord God, those of us who have been betrayed. Blend in us justice and love that stands strong against injustice. When we stiffen against your grace, Lord, please soften us. When we sag under the weight of our days, Lord, please strengthen us. Oh God, we did not make ourselves. We cannot keep ourselves and could never forgive ourselves. So we turn to you, our maker, our provider, our savior, through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we are hosting our services in this new series from all three of our locations, in here in London, in Stratford, and in Huron, also here in London. And today, again, we're coming to you from our Fanshawe location. And because these services will be hosted in three locations. We have reduced the number of site-specific announcements during this time in our service. And so to stay up to date on what is current and coming at your site, be sure to stay up on the communications specific to the location that you attend. Here at Fanshawe, I'd encourage you to check out this week's e-news to stay up to date. Well, Pastor Shane is going to be preaching for us today and so as he does, let us pray briefly. Lord, grant us ears to hear what you are saying through your word today. Amen. At North Park Community Church, we have six core values. Life transformation, community, living on mission, practical relevant faith, gratitude and generosity, and grace. Let's look into community to understand it a little more. We commit to seeing people deeply connected to one another in caring and challenging relationships. But what does it mean to really enjoy community? And what keeps us from real community? Our culture seems to value online friends, looking at numbers of friends rather than the depths of the friendships. 
And in all honesty, truly deep friendships take effort and commitment. There are many Bible verses that talk about how we should interact with one another. It uses words like harmony, acceptance, forgiveness, service, and most importantly, love, when referring to community. Online friends are a start, but ultimately real community goes deeper than that. God calls us into relationships that go both ways, to care and be cared for, to know and be known, and accountability all happens in two directions. God himself is community. We see that in the Trinity, three in one, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And each of us being created in God's image explains why this is so relevant in our lives. At North Park Community Church, through serving together, worshiping together, and small groups, we provide opportunities to support each other, inspire each other, and challenge each other to live like Jesus as a transforming and life-giving presence in our families, communities, and the world. The other day, my wife Yvonne and I, we, we were driving up the street in our neighborhood and we noticed a family moving out of a house. That's not abnormal, but the moving truck was there and we instantly felt kind of sad. And, and I guess the reason we felt sad is that Yvonne and I kind of, we kind of detest moving. And the reason is, in the 22 years that we have been married, we have moved, brace yourself for it, 16 times. You heard it, 16 times. We kind of strongly dislike moving. And U-Haul, they've seen more than a few dollars uh, from us. And so it's no wonder uh, that our fight or flight response goes into high alert whenever someone in our family sees a U-Haul truck. And, and that's no shade meant if you work uh, for U-Haul. You know, it's hard to think about community when you've moved 16 times in 22 years. So when I think about community, I, I think about people who know each other and people who are just looking out for each other. So when I think about community, I oftentimes go back to the place where I was raised, a small town in Newfoundland. And this is the place, this is the home where I spent the most 17 formative years of my life. So what you're looking at right now is the house that I was raised in. And I worked through many significant issues in this house as a kid and as a teenager. Maybe one of the most significant issues was whether to actually have a perm or a mullet. And I eventually chose the mullet. Down the street, just a few steps from my house, was the Pilgrim household. And the boys, Hank and Seymour, they were a little older than me, but I'm pretty sure that if I got in a whole heap of trouble, Hank and Seymour probably would have stepped up and put a little bit of smackdown on some people uh, on my behalf, if you know what I'm saying. Then just a hop, skip, and jump down the street, there's another Pilgrim family. And sometimes I would hang out with their son, Brad. I actually remember behind Brad's house one night, I broke my wrist behind his house, snow sledding on a GT snow racer. Maybe you have one of those. Then less than 15 seconds from his place was the Hillier household. And I got in lots of trouble with their son, Mike. Back in the days when you could call people on the telephone and say stuff like, is your refrigerator running? And they'd say, yeah, it is. And then you'd say stuff like, then you better go catch it. And then they invented call display and ruined everything. And I don't even think people even answer telephone calls anymore. Then across the street is the Patey family. And there I would hang out with their son, Shane. Yeah, deadly combination, Shane and Shane. We'd hang out behind this guy's house all day long and on his little backyard ice rink, I literally won the Stanley Cup in my mind at least a thousand times as the best goalie on earth. Victory is sweet. So this community was like the hood. This was the place. It was tight. It was small. Everyone knew everybody. And I could still hear my mom's voice as she would open the patio doors every day at 4.55 and she would yell out, Shaney! It's time to come home for supper. Get home. Now my mommy could always call me Shaney, but you could never call me Shaney. That was how it was. And then I got older and I became a follower 
of Jesus. And now I didn't know how to navigate the community I, I had been a part of my whole life. So I embraced a new community, the Christian community. And the first family to take me into their Christian community was another family with the surname Hillier. And that family, along with their son Brent, taught me a lot about the cultural expectations of what it meant to be a Christian in that community, in that culture. And in that culture, it was a lot about taking the money that I used to spend on beer and now spending it on food. And as you can tell, that has been something that has been catching up to me ever since. And then I went to Bible school and got married and had a family and still have a family and spent 20 years pastoring churches in various places and always wondered what it really meant to have true community. As we look at the ethos, the atmosphere, the climate, the culture of this place that we call North Park Community Church, we probably need to understand this now more than we ever have before because now we're growing our influence in more neighborhoods. We're impacting more lives for Jesus. Two years ago in August, we planted North Park Huron, which is where I get to spend most of my time. And there are people that are connecting there that are totally new to North Park and who we are. Last year in August, we planted North Park Stratford. And you'll hear from Kirk later in this series, who is the site pastor there. But there are brand new people there in Stratford who are also new to North Park. And maybe you're connected here to Fanshawe. And maybe you've been here for years. Or maybe you're brand new here. And you're just learning who we are who we aspire to be, what community means here. So yeah, it's important right now that we lean into this ethos just to rediscover who are we. One of the core values of North Park Community Church is community. And community can be defined in lots of different ways. Growing up in my little town, we had a sense of community. Everybody kind of knew everyone. At your workplace, uh, you may have a sense of community. People on your street, they probably got a sense of community. You probably even got your own little neighborhood watch uh, kind of thing going on. And that's all good. But what does it mean to have Christian community? What does it mean to be part of a Jesus community? And the only place I can really turn to answer that question is to Jesus' book. And so let me take you there for a moment. The book that we're going to look at today is called Acts because it talks about the acts of the Holy Spirit in the life of the early church. And so we see how the church acted in response to the acts of the Holy Spirit amongst the people. So this is a really good, good solid place for us to start. So I just want to read a couple of verses. Maybe these verses are familiar to you, and maybe they're not. Maybe this is the first time you ever looked at a Bible in your life, and if that's the case, you're in the right spot. Don't tune out now. I'm going to make this make sense for you. That's my job. So let's do it. Acts 2. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common. Selling their possessions and their goods, they gave to anybody as they had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added daily to the number of those who were being saved. So this is like the first church, the prototype kind of church, maybe even the ideal church. And before we look at this quickly, I just need to say something, a little disclaimer. The ideal was ideal in that culture. And there are some things that carry over into our culture and some things that kind of, they kind of just don't. And sometimes well-meaning Christians, well-meaning followers of Jesus will say things like, we just need to get back to the way the early church was. Or, we just need to be an Acts kind of church. And they're partially right. But in the Acts church, the believers were also persecuted, scattered, and many of them were killed. 
And, and so usually when I explain that to people, more of us become more thankful that we are a part of the modern day North American church while still knowing there are some aspects of the Acts church that should carry over. Some of those carry over things are going to be seen right now. So let me explain it this way. The Bible says that this first church community was devoted to at least a few things, some stuff they wouldn't budge on. The apostles' teaching was one of them. They wanted to be sure that those that were closest to Jesus, that actually heard his words, were the ones that they got their teaching from. They were devoted to the fellowship. What did it mean to be a community of people who just did life together as one common unit? They were devoted to it. They were also devoted to the breaking of bread. Historians don't really know if this means communion or just spending time together around a common table. But whatever it was, they did it together. They were devoted to it as they worked their faith out together. And they were also devoted to what the Bible calls the prayers. Prayer has been a part of the earliest Christian community right from the very, very beginning. And here in this chapter, we see they were devoted to it. Then as we kind of work down through the story, as we just read a moment ago, there's this part about wonders and miracles that the apostles did in the community. And that's a sermon for a different day. Lots of people around here smarter than me can talk to you about that. But then we also see that all the believers were together and had everything in common. They shared all their stuff. They sold belongings off. They shared everything they kind of had. It was a core Christian posture. They were devoted to it in the early church. So there was this community around these kinds of things. We see there was community around the possessions and around these four postures of teaching, breaking bread, fellowship, and prayer. I would say there wasn't just community around it, there was common unity around it. And that is what Christian community kind of looks like, especially in the early church. And here, that is the foundation that is what we build on right here. That's what we aspire to be at North Park Fanshawe. That's what we aspire to be at North Park Huron. And that is definitely who we aspire to be at North Park Stratford. At North Park, we aspire to community. We want common unity around here, around the same core things. And you would hope that any church would say there's community around things like the apostles teaching around fellowship, the breaking of bread, and certainly prayer. But here at North Park, we take the community value, the common unity value, just a little bit deeper. We define it like this. Community, being deeply connected to one another in caring and truth-telling relationships. So let me ask you the question. Are you deeply connected to someone at North Park in a caring and truth-telling relationship? Are you? It's a question. And if so, who are you connected with? And what does that connection look like? If someone were to ask you if you were in a caring and truth-telling relationship at North Park Community Church, could you say yes? If I were to ask you, and I am asking you, are you in a caring and truth-telling relationship at North Park Community Church? Can you answer yes? Here's the thing, and I hate to bring this up, but here it goes. Caring and truth-telling. These are the things that don't best happen from the stage on a Sunday. These are the things that you don't often get from a walk through the church lobby. You don't often get that when you drop the kids off to the nursery. And you don't often get it when the worship leader leads the singing. And you don't even really get it when the announcements are made on a weekend. And you don't even really get it when the sermon's preached. But we really do care for you. And we really do want you to know what the truth is. But the relationships, the community in which caring and truth-telling happens, generally speaking, doesn't happen in this room. Generally doesn't happen in these seats. Nope. They happen in small groups. They happen in, in homes. They happen out, out for coffee. They, they happen in relationship. And relationship is small group. Relationship is not large group. So right now, as pastors at North Park Community Church, we will take the lead 
on the apostles' teaching. We will create opportunities for fellowship. We will lead in the breaking of bread, as we'll do together next Sunday. And we'll create lots of opportunity for prayer. Why? Because we are devoted. There's common unity around all of those things. But community happens in the one-on-ones, the intense conversations, the truth-telling and the caring. Best happens when the focus is on the small group. It's not on the large group gathering. And you know something? It seems like in these days that we're focused on the smallness, aren't we? We're leaning into the smallness of the gatherings these days. So this is the time right now for you to lean in to community. One of the fresh new ways around here that we are valuing community across the North Park orbit is by the formation of North Park quads. These are groups of four people. If you're watching from Fanshawe or Stratford or Huron, you can find three or four of your friends and you can connect to a North Park quad online every single week. We'll provide you with with scriptures to pray through and things to think through as a group and help you to have a structure by which you can form some community around you every single week. All you got to do is reach out to us, care at northpark.ca, groups at northpark.ca, and we will help you with this. Why? Because this is what we do. At North Park Community Church, we value community. When was the last time you cared for someone in your North Park community? When was the last time you told someone the truth in your North Park community? The truth? You can't handle the truth. (laughs) Oh, I've been waiting all week just to say that. I love that line. Is it harder to give truth or harder to receive truth? When was the last time you received the truth from someone you trusted in community right here at North Park Community Church? Was that hard for you to hear? I remember a day when I had a conversation with one of my North Park friends. And let's just say it was a hard conversation for me to hear. And I'm sure it was a very difficult conversation, a challenging conversation for that person to have with me. The moment of truth telling arose from something that I said in public. And you need to be careful, super careful, what you say in public and what you post in public. That's why I'm not on Facebook. Maybe that's a whole different sermon. But the thing that I said, let's just say it wasn't wasn't thought through very well and really didn't land super well with some of the people who heard it. A friend of mine who heard it, rather than continue to let me make that same mistake over and over again, chose to take a risk and give me a little bit of truth telling. We had the beginnings of a relationship. Her approach was was super humble and super helpful. But man, I'm telling you, it was painful for me to hear. And the truth sometimes is going to hurt. And the thing that I said sounded male chauvinistic. And that hurt me a lot to know that I came across that way to people that I care a lot about, especially considering my role as a pastor and more importantly as a husband and a father of two daughters. That truth-telling conversation made me realize that my words matter and in community I'm thankful for people that are brave enough to have those truth-telling conversations with people like me. And that's what true community is about. (laughs) In that conversation, there was both care, because that's what brought her to me in the first place, and truth-telling. Now, that doesn't give you the right to just kind of walk up and drop a truth-telling sledgehammer on someone who you don't even have a relationship with in the church. That's not what we're talking about. We don't do that around here. But in community, you can have these caring and truth-telling conversations, and we expect you to. We value that around here. True Christian community. It's a real gift. It's a gift from God, and God has given that gift to us right here at North Park Community Church. So we we may not be gathered in, in large groups on Sunday, but 
we still value community and we can still have community. Find North Parkers in your orbit close to you and form community with them. It is God's will for you. It's God's will for us right here at North Park Community Church. So let me leave you with these words, how we have community with each other. The scripture says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in all its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so to others as one who speaks the very words, the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should serve with the strength that God provides so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Well, would you join us in singing one more song as we close our service today?
Thank you for joining us today, North Park Community Church, as you step forward into your week. We pray that may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. God bless, and we'll see you next week.